Hey guys, in today's video, I want to show you how to make this kind of vellum inflation effect. So let's dive in. So I've created a new blank scene in Houdini and the first step is to add a new geometry node. So here you can rename it something like inflation R&D and you can dive inside. So the first step is to create different spheres to create the inflations. So to do that, you can use a grid with a scatter node, you can use a circle with a scatter node. But in our case, let's create a philotaxis pattern for the spheres. So to do that, let's add an add node. Here you can press P to open the parameter of this node and click on plus to add a point. So now you can see that we have a little points on our scenes, on the center of the scenes. Now let's add a point wrangle. And now we need to create some points in a philotaxis pattern. So to do that, let's start by creating a value for the total points. So int num pts which is equal to channel i. And here you can create a channel for this and you can name it something like num points or total points. Now let's create a value for the total radius of the pattern. So let's create float radius scale. And here we can create a new channel float for this one. So we can type channel floats and here we can name it something like radius scale. So now to create this kind of pattern, we have to use a loop. So let's add a for loop. And here we can type int i is equal to zero. Then we can type i is uh, below our num pt variables. You can copy that, paste it here. And then we can type i plus plus to iterate. Now let's create an angle value. So let's type float angle, which is equal to i plus, let's define a channel float for the angles, radians. So we have to convert our degrees in radians. So the radian function do that. So let's type channel float and we can type angles. And here we can create our angle variables. Now we can create a variables for the radius. So we can type float radius which is equal to our radius scale variable here. So you can copy that, paste it here. And we can multiply that with the square root of i to get nice distribution of points. So let's use the function square root. And now we have to deal with x and z axis. So let's create float x, which is equal to our radius, multiplied by cos angle. And let's do the same for the z axis, float z, which is equal to radius. And this time we can use sine angle. And now let's update the point positions. So let's create the vector pose, which is equal to set. And we can type x, 0, and z. So now let's create points, add points. And we can type 0, pause. And now we can close the loop at the end. And we can create the different parameter by clicking on this. And for the total points, I will put the value at 500. For the radius scale, I will put the value at 0.135. And for the angle value here, you can play with different settings if you want. So you can go into the gear parameter here, click on edit parameter interface. And here you can select the angle value and you can put the value for minus 360 to 360. Click apply and accept and you can play with different value here if you want. But I think the perfect value for this kind of pattern is 137.5. So I've made a little mistake here for the angle value. It's not i plus the angles, but i multiplied by the angles. So now you can see that we have perfect uh, patterns. So now you can press D, put the background in dark, and you can see that we have very nice pattern. Imagine having access to over 40 hours of exclusive Houdini tutorials, and that library keeps growing every month with brand new content. On Arda Labs, you'll find in-depth Houdini tutorials covering motion design, simulations, product visualization, and more. Plus, you get access to all project files so you can follow along step by step. And right now, we're offering an extra 20% off the annual membership, on top of the 10% discount already included when compared to the monthly plan. This exclusive deal is available for the first 30 people, so don't miss out. Click the link below, your 20% discount is applied automatically. Secure your spot before it's gone. So now let's add a spheres. Here on the spheres, you can change the primitive type to polygons and you can increase the frequency to maybe five or six. Maybe you can add UVs on the spheres by using the UV project nodes. And here with the UV project, you can change the projection to polar. Now you can see that we have UVs on the spheres. And now you can use the match size node. And here with the match size node, you can put the justify Y to minimum. So now we can copy the spheres on the different points. So to do that, let's add the copy two points nodes. Let's plug the geometry on the left input and let's plug the points on the right input. And now you can see the results of our shapes. So now we can animate the scale over time for the spheres to uh, avoid overlap between the different spheres. So to do that, you can go to the spheres and you can change the uniform scale and you can put the 
starting radius at something like 0.1. Let's add a keyframe, Alt and left click. And now you can go to the frame 24 and you can put the radius at something like 0.3 you can click on alt and left click one more time so now you can see that we have the spheres growing over time so now let's remove the intersection between the spheres because for now you can see at the frame 24 we have some little intersection between the different spheres so to do that you can put all the spheres in a group so let's add a group node and here with this group node you can rename it something like pin and here you can put that in points and you can put everything to this group and here you can rename it something like pin so now you can add the vellum configure balloons here on the vellum close constraint you can use the pin points and here the pin points is our pin group we have created just before and now you can put that to soft and you can click on match animations so now let's add the vellum solver let's add the vellum io to put the simulation in cache and here you can put that to explicit you can put that in a cache folder and dollar os folder and you can put that in cache for 24 frame because we have the keyframe on the sphere for the scale from the frame one to the frame 24. So we can put that in cache for 24 frame. So you can right click, delete channels, and you can remove this one to 24. So now you can click on save to disk. So now let's add a time shift node after the vellum IO cache. So you can use time shift node. And here you can freeze the simulations maybe at the frame 20. So like this. So now we don't have any intersection between the different spheres. So right click, delete channels. And in that case, we have our simulation freeze at the frame 20 for the entire uh, animations. So now you can add a null to specify this is the spheres for the inputs. So you can rename it something like out spheres. So now let's create a grid with a sine wave to control the inflation and also control the shader. So to do that, let's add a new grid. Here you can change the settings of the grid. You can put the size at 6 and 6 and you can increase the point number to 100 and 100. So now let's add a point wrangles to add our sine wave. So here with this point wrangle, let's start by creating a new float dist variables. And this one is equal to the length and we can type set at p dot x and at p dot dead. So now let's create frequency, amplitude, and speed. So let's create float amplitude, which is equal to channel float. And we can type amplitude for the name of the channels. Let's do the same for the uh, frequency. Channel float, we can create a channel called frequency. And let's do the same for the speed, float speed is equal to channel float speed. So now let's create the wave. Float wave is equal to sine. And we can type dist times frequency minus at time multiplied by speed. So now let's remap our wave to 0 and 1. So we can type wave is equal to fit wave from minus 1 to 1 to 0 and one and now let's create an attribute based on that so we can type at inflate this is the name of the attribute you can call it as you want and here we can type wave multiply amplitude and to visualize the result of this attribute you can also create a color attribute so at cd is equal to at inflate so now we can create the different value for the amplitude frequency and speed so for the frequency, I will put the value at 3, for the amplitude at 1, and for the speed, I will put the value at 3. And you can see that we have this kind of sine wave. So now let's add a bit of noise to our sine, because for now it's very, very straight. So let's add an attribute VOP. And here you can import our attribute called inflate. So let's add the bind. We can just type inflate, because this is the name of the attribute. And now let's add an add node, a turbulent noise. And here you can plug the position to the position of the noise. You can plug that to the first input of the add. And you can plug the noise to the second input of the add. Now let's add a bind export. And you can export the inflate attribute. So this is a float attribute, inflate. And you can put that to the color to see the result of the noise. So here for the settings of the noise, you can uh, just put it to simplex. You can play with different noise type. And you can put the frequency at maybe 1.5. And you can decrease the roughness to 0. And now you can see that we have a bit of noise on our pattern. You can also play with the amplitude if you want. So if you put the amplitude at 2, you can see that we have a bit more strong noise. But in my case, I will keep the amplitude at 1. Ready to level up your Houdini pipeline? Get the Houdini Script Pack. Complete toolkit, 7 powerful tools today, plus every future release with free updates. Save time on composition, geometry splitting, material creation, and more. YouTube subscribers get 50% off with code TOOLKIT. Click the link in the description and transfer 
transform your workflow today. So now on the left side, we have our sine wave to control the inflation on the shader. On the right side, we have our sphere. So now we need to transfer the inflate attribute to the spheres. So first, let's add a group delete node. And let's delete every group. So to do that, you can put a star here. It will delete our pin group we have created before because we will create a new pin group after that. Now let's add a new group. So now let's create a pin group. So we need to pin the spheres just a bit on the bottom here. So here you can change the group name to pin. You can put that to points. And here you can disable the base group and enable in bounding regions. And you can enable the bounding box. So now you can increase the size of the box to maybe something like this. So you can press shift to uh, scale based on the center of the box. Same for this axis. And now you can change the size here. You can go to space three and now you can increase the size on the X axis to maybe something like this. Now you can see that we have a pin for here. Maybe you can increase it just a bit more, something like this. And now you can press space one to go back in the 3D view. So now let's add an attribute transfer and you can transfer the attributes created here on the spheres. So to do that, you can plug the spheres on the first input and the attribute on the second input. And now we can transfer the attribute called inflate and you can also transfer the color attribute to get a preview of the attribute. And now you can see that we have the wave on our spheres. So now let's add a null and let's rename it something like out inflate. So now let's create the vellum simulation for the inflations. So let's add the vellum configure balloon one more time. So you can plug the spheres on the first input and here you can select the vellum close constraints. Here don't forget to select your pin group. And here for the stretch, I will keep the value by default, but I will increase the damping ratio to 0.01. Also on the bend, I will increase the damping ratio to 0.1 and I will increase the stiffness to 100,000. So now let's select the vellum pressure constraints. So you can select this one. I will increase the stiffness instead of six, I will put eight. I will increase the damping ratio to 0.01 and I will create a group for these constraints and you can enable the group by selecting this little icon and you can uh, set the group name to something like P stretch. So now let's add the vellum solver. So now we need to control the inflation based on this wave attribute. So to do that, we can select the null created here. So you can select it, control C to copy these nulls. And now we can dive into the vellum solver. So to control the inflation based on an attribute, you can use the vellum constraint properties. You can plug that to the source and here you can select a group. So the first one is a P-stretch group. So here we need to get access to the inflate attribute created on the SOP with this node. So to do that, you can go to the input tab and here into the input suite, you can put SOP and you can paste the null that we have copied just before. So control V. So now we have selected the null here. Now you can go to the properties and you can enable the rest scale value and you can control that with VEX. So you can use a VEX expression here. So let's create a float inflate, which is equal to our points. And here we have to select the input number two because we have put the null here on the input three. So now we can select our inflate attributes and add PTNM. So now you can remap this value. Inflate is equal to fit. And you can type inflate going from zero to one. And you can remap that to a new minimum and new maximum. So to do that, you can create two channel floats. I think it will be a bit better to control them. So you can type inflate min and also inflate max so channel float is equal to inflate max and now let's update the rest scale based on that so rest scale times equal inflate now to create the two channel created here so channel float uh, inflate mean and inflate max you can click on that and in my case i will put the value at 1 and 50. so now we need to copy this one but this time to control the stretch here on the vellum close not on the vellum pressure so to do that you can press alt and left click to copy the node you can plug it here and now you can select the correct group. So in my case, I will remove this one and the group is called stretch. So now you can just change the value. So in my case, I will put one and four. So it's pretty much it for the inflations. Now you can also transfer the attributes inflate and color to the DOP geometry. So to do that, let's add a SOP solver, plug it here. Let's dive inside. And here you can use an object merge. You can paste the nulls that we have copied before. So we have our object here and you can transfer the attribute from here to here. So let's add an attribute transform node. You can plug that to the first input, that to the second input and plug that to the out. So here you can transfer the attribute called inflate and CD. So now you can go back to the sub level by clicking on this and you can add another vellum IO. And here for this vellum IO, you can rename it something like inflations bubbles. So here you can put that to explicit. You can put that to cash folder and dollar OS folder. And you can put that in cache for, let's say, 144 frame. So now you can click on save to this to put this simulation in cache. So now you can see the results of the inflations. So we have the inflation controlled by our sine wave. And now let's add the vellum post process. And here you can subdivide our spheres. So you can click on loop 
And if you want, you can increase the subdivision depth to two, if it's not an house like this one. So now let's add an attribute delete and you can delete pretty much everything except the color and the inflate attribute so you can select color you can select inflate and you can click on delete non-selected and now if you want to have a little preview you can put the color in white here just for this of course if you want you can always go to the vellum solver and you can tweak the parameter here for the minimum maximum into this first vellum constraint properties and same for the second one you can tweak the inflate minimum and inflate maximum to get quite different results so now if you want, you can use the inflate attribute to create a mask for the shader and you can use this one to create colors. It's fully up to you. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget you can buy the entire project file with the link in the description. See you in the next one. Bye bye. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check artivoxar.com to get premium 3D resources. You can access to this project file with our Artifiles membership. See you in the next one. Bye. Oh,